And we made a great effort to help John Swinney by adding this additional signage to his constituency office in order to help him to get his message across. And it certainly did, reached um, you know, about 50,000 people on Facebook and other social media. But he didn't have a word of thanks to say to us about that. However, we wrote to John Swinney, put in the points uh, from our opinion polls, showing what the public thinks about his sex education resources, some aspects of them, and he did reply to that. Let's have a look what he'd got to say. So we put to him the familiar things about the banana and dipping into Nutella, the someone having sex with someone in the Zimmer frame, promotion of pornography in the classroom, teaching five to eight-year-olds about artificial insemination, teaching 12 to 15-year-olds about the rate of lesbian orgasms, teaching about uh, anal sex involving the mouth, rimming, so-called, uh, um, talking about drag queens going into primary schools. These are the sort of things. So how is John Swinney going to reply, do you think? He's got three options, basically. He could say, right, thank you for the raising these issues. I'm going to tell you why I'm sticking to my guns. I'm going to tell you why I think drag queens should be going into primary schools, why kids do need to learn about lesbian orgasm rates, why they do need to be taught about rimming, etc. Or he could say, OK, fair point. Maybe the public's right. I'm going to retract my previous uh, positions and I've changed my mind on this. We're going to change it. Or he could just try and come out with some sort of management speaking in waffle and hope it'll just go away. Now, you've probably guessed which one is done. Yeah, let's see. Dear Richard, thank you for your letter of 5th of September attaching results of a poll commissioned by the Scottish Family Party on the online sex education teaching resource. The online relationship, sexual health and parenthood teaching resource contains up-to-date content developed in line with national and international guidance that supports teachers to deliver high quality as well as age and stage appropriate RSHP education. This is delivered across the entire three to 18 age range of the existing curriculum. Now, I think if John Swinney was accused of like smashing someone's skull in with a hammer and you said to him, what have you got to say for yourself? I think he'd say the hammer had a yellow handle. It was bought from B&Q. It was a Stanley uh, branded hammer. It was 30 centimeters long and suitable for knocking nails into uh, wood. He just completely missing the actual point, just giving some irrelevant background information. Anyway, on it goes. Uh, curriculum for, for Excellence, right? This is not new learning. Curriculum for Excellence and the experiences and outcomes that support the delivery of RSHP education have been in place for over 10 years. So saying this is nothing new. Yes, it is. It, this is deliberate deception, I would say. The guidance might not have changed. The, the Curriculum for Excellence text might not have changed, but these resources are new and the content in them is new. The Curriculum for Excellence doesn't say the kids have to learn about licking the anus as a sexual activity, but the rshp.scot resources do say they should learn about that. So you, you, you're trying to cover things up here, and I would say um, conceal the truth. You talk about international guidance. The Scottish government's never happy when it's been told what to do by an international body. International guidance, the UN, I think they would have completely screwed up view of sexuality education as well. So yes, you probably are in line with those, which means you're wrong. Right, next thing. Development of the online resource was informed by over a thousand primary and secondary school teachers and piloted in 38 schools across Scotland. A network of around 1,500 individuals, including parents and carers, also engaged in its development. When the resource was launched in September, I said it would undoubtedly strengthen delivery of meaningful RSHP education in the areas our children and young people have told us they want to learn about. Okay, 1,500 individuals. That's a self-selecting sample from within the bubble of Scottish education, of a part of the bubble of Scottish education. Our poll was a cross-section of the Scottish public. So you should listen to our poll, not to your little in-crowd that you've got here. Right, so you say um, it covers the areas our children and young people have told us they want to learn about. Don't pass the buck. Don't blame the kids. Okay, the adults have got the responsibility here. The adults should be saying, this is what's appropriate. This is what kids need to learn. This is what's in good taste. This is what's genuine wisdom in our society. That's what you should be putting forward. Um, and the fact that all these schools and teachers were completely on board for it just shows the degree of the disconnect between the educational establishment and 
the wider public. That should be the lesson that you're learning. Now, John Swinney shows zero leadership in the area of education. I've never heard him say anything original at all, not a single sentence. All he does is listens to the teaching unions, the GTCS, just the, the, the blob, the educational establishment, whatever they say, he parrots back to them, hoping that it will make him popular. Anyway, I mean, that's, that you see, there's no hint that he's actually got any judgment of his own. It's just uh, contracted out to the educational establishment. Anyway, I stand by that statement, as many teachers have welcomed the publication of clear and easy to use resources, which have helped instill further confidence in their delivery of RSHP education. Well, of course, they like having easy to find ready-made lesson plans. Of course they do, but that's hardly the point, is it? This is supported by pupils who said they've received a more positive RSHP learning experience from teachers using the new resources. Absolute rubbish. What that means is a couple of teachers got their classes to tick some boxes in a questionnaire at the end of some lessons. I mean, was there a control group or, or whatever? I mean, this is not in any way credible research. This is just back of an envelope, trivial, low standard uh, well, nonsense. But in Scotland, that's what passes for factual basis for education policy. Right, parents have also, parents have also welcoming the information sessions. Right, okay, welcomed, I think. The information sessions offered by schools on the online resource and have commented they are looking forward to the benefits the resource will have on their child's education. Yeah, how many parents said that? But three, these information sessions, they're not information sessions, they're disinformation sessions, and they're deliberately designed to obscure the true nature of these resources and to present a bland, innocuous version of it to parents in order to reassure them. And then in the classroom, they could get on with the real vulgar and corrupting content. I mean, I actually read some quotes from parents and pupils as well from questionnaires that had been done in the Western Isles, and uh, they were... Uh, not supportive. Let's leave it at that. Right. I understand that the content of some of the lesson plans contains imagery which may be deemed unsuitable by some people when they are not provided with the full context. In other words, he's saying everybody would think it's perfectly appropriate if they knew the context. Okay. So if you just realized why they were showing a cartoon of someone having a sex with, with a, uh, someone with a Zimmer frame, if you realise that that was to explain about mature pornography in the context of suggesting, encouraging pupils to explore that particular genre of pornography, if people only understood that was the context, they think it was fine. I mean, the banana dipping into Nutella, if people only understood it was illustrating anal sex, I don't know what other context he thinks would be relevant. Anyway, if only they knew the context, it would all be okay. I mean, does he really believe that? Does he really believe it? Our questionnaire, in any case, did explain the content, the, the context, but it's feeble, right? The image we used in the resource has been carefully selected to be age appropriate and ensure factual and unambiguous information can be presented in a way, ways which augment learning and answer the questions young people have. So your reason you need that sort of imagery is so you can provide unambiguous information. So you can't encourage pupils to explore mature pornography, pornography involving old people, without that image. That's what he's trying to say. I mean, where do you even start answering that? Imagery must be credible to ensure young people remain engaged with their learning. In other words, if you don't have this sort of obscene uh, image, if you don't have banana dipping into Nutella or someone having sex with someone in a Zimmer frame, if you don't have that, the pupils will just be bored start gazing out the window and they won't listen to the lesson. I mean, what a ridiculous point. What does he think maths teachers do when they're teaching about quadratic equations? How do they manage to keep any attention on what they're doing? Do you think they have to pop up the odd pornographic image every couple of lines of maths to keep the class engaged? I mean, has, any, has this even been thought about when John Swinney wrote this? It's just complete nonsense. Right, the Scottish Government remains committed to ensuring all children and young people receive high quality RSHP education to help them understand how their bodies change and to help them build positive relationships as they grow older. Right, that's what we want as well, but we know how to do it and what you're doing is actually undermining it. The online RSHP teaching resources are a key contributor 
to that commitment. So the only points it picked up on from our poll and the concerns it raised were just the ones about the images. It completely ignores all of the others. So how does it get away with that? Just completely ignoring very valid points put in. Well, the reason you can get away with that is that the politicians in the Scottish Parliament will never challenge him. He will never have to face the music on this issue. He'll never be challenged by politicians and he'll never be uh, challenged by our useless media either. I mean, when we published our opinion poll results, press release, not a single paper in Scotland ran the story. Whereas there have been similar stories about concerns about sex education in England, left, right and centre reported in the mainstream media. In Scotland, even the Times Educational Supplement, a publication that exists solely to provide news about Scottish education, failed to give our survey, our opinion poll, the slightest mention. So as well as writing to John Swinney, various people involved with the family party contacted their local MPs, MSPs as well. This is just a little selection of some of their responses. The standard response with the SMP, by the way, on social media we found so far, is generally to say, well, it's up to schools and teachers to choose. We need to trust them. They know their classes best, etc. In other words, we've produced these disgusting resources, but don't blame us. I mean, it's up to, it's up to schools and teachers if they want to use them. So it's nothing to do with us. I mean, it's a pretty weak line, to say the least. Anyway, here we go with uh, Willie Rennie, leader of the Liberal Democrats. Thanks for sharing this. The lessons are not compulsory, and faith schools are allowed to follow their own guidance. Aid-specific guidance and listening to parents is important. I do support good relationships and sex advice in order to support healthy respect with boys and girls. There's too much sexual violence in Scotland, and we need to do all we can to tackle it. I hope this helps. Well, no, it doesn't help at all. You need to explain to us why vulgar, trivializing, corrupting self-education helps to tackle sexual violence. I didn't respond to any of the specific concerns. Right, the next one, this is from a conservative MSP, who, as it happens, is a Christian. He's at parliamentary prayer meetings, etc. Uh, what does he have to say? I have and will continue to ask questions of government on these issues. I also have private meetings to raise my concerns. You ask questions of the government? Where? Not in the parliament, not in the debating chamber, not in the media, not publicly. Private meetings. Why are these meetings private? Okay, why even when you're responding to your constituent, can't you say, yes, I agree, this is wrong. There's something far wrong here. I want to help sort this out. It's so cautious and timid. I mean, private meetings, that's not the way politics works. I mean, when the Conservatives talk about the tax rate, they don't have private meetings with the SNP and say, we think the tax rate ought to be a bit lower. Actually, we would rather not say publicly, but you know, if you wouldn't mind just, just listening to this quiet word. That's not the way politics works. If you're concerned about something, if you think the government's doing something wrong, then you attack them for it. You say, this is wrong. This is what you should be doing instead. So this conservative MSP basically is going to do nothing. So I'm trying to keep the person who emailed just on side a little bit, but basically they're doing nothing. Right, next one, SMP MP. Thank you for your email regarding sex education in Scottish schools. I have firstly asked John Swinney whether the references made in the PDF document you sent me are from the government material. I will contact you again as soon as I receive a reply. In other words, this SMP MP doesn't actually believe that this stuff is the official government materials. He looks at it and thought, oh, wow, surely this can't be true. So we're checking with John Swinney. John Swinney will have to say, well, yeah, I'm afraid it is. Yeah, that is actually... Uh, what we want teaching in schools. So all this SNP MP do now, uh, probably in the tradition of the SNP, they'll just tow the line, keep their head down and go with the flow. Right, next one, another SNP MSP. Here we go. Uh, now our documents that were sent out covering these issues, one of the problems with the resources we said was the endorsement of sexual promiscuity and premarital sex. And she replied saying, those who choose not to marry, but to cohabit or have sexual relationships outside marriage are not pariahs and whose children are not given lesser status or are shamed. And thank goodness for that too. I mean, what's she thinking? So we complain that the materials endorse sexual promiscuity and premarital sex. A lot of people think those things are not helpful. That's not good advice to people. And she replies in that sort of hysterical manner as they were wanting to treat people like pariahs and treat some children as having lesser status. 
it, it's a parallel universe out there. And the reason, I mean, it's not her fault. I mean, she, she lives in this parallel universe and she's never engaged with the alternative view. The Scottish Family Party, MSPs then, and the other MSPs would have to listen and engage with alternative points of view. Right, the next one. It's an MSP, but it's quiz time. Which party do you think this MSP is from? Thank you for contacting me regarding the Scottish Government's guidance on sex education in schools. We all want our children to grow up into happy and well-rounded individuals who know how to deal with the challenges of the modern world. Therefore, it is only right that content related to relationships, sexual health and parenthood are taught in Scotland's state schools. These subjects are designed to ensure pupils are taught the knowledge and life skills they will need to stay safe, build confidence and resilience and develop healthy and supportive relationships. Once again, I thank you for contacting me on this issue. These issues are an important part of a child's education and as such, schools and teachers are best placed to decide how they're taught. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking this is just another SNP parrot, isn't it? Well, no, that's a Conservative MSP. Right, the last one, another SNP MSP. While I have not seen all of this material, there is much of the selected material that you have forwarded, which I would not use in the classroom, and I would be very surprised if it was. So this SNP MSP is saying he wouldn't use the SMP's sex education resources, and I would be surprised if any schools and teachers did actually choose to use the SMP's official sex education resources. I mean, talk about the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing. So the SMP is even managing to cover this up from its own MSPs that's managing to keep them in the dark. And that situation can continue, as I say, because they've just got a stranglehold on the media and there's no alternative voices in the parliament so there we go the point of this video is to illustrate just the sorry state of affairs in the scottish parliament and the only way to change it it's not right into mps it's not right into msps it's not right into john swinney the way to change it is to vote for change to vote for the scottish family party put our representatives in the parliament and then this debate is going to happen for real and once this is on the public agenda then the weight of public opinion will tell and the direction will change if you want to see that happen the best thing you can do Today, right now, is to join the Scottish Family Party via the link below. Thanks for watching.